welcome to another episode of Creating Memories Live with Team Sunweb. We're coming to you from Rome as three weeks of incredible racing at the Giro d'Italia comes to a close. I'll be joined soon by Chad Hager, Roy Curvers, Lawrence Tendam and Tom Dumoulin, plus a couple of the coaches as well. And what a Giro d'Italia it was for Team Sunweb, second and ninth in the general classification, a stage win and some pretty incredible racing as well. First, let's take a look at the backdrop, the beautiful Rome for today's stage. First up, I'm very pleased to be joined by Roy Curvers and Lawrence Tendam. But before we talk to the guys, let's take a look at their Giro d'Italia. Okay, I take you this morning on a trip through the bus. I sit in the back, like always, bad boys sitting in the back. Eh? The fridge, also really important. Fully stocked. First thing I do in the morning, a bowl some water. How was our day? It was hard, man. It was hard. Guys, it looks like you've had a pretty incredible three weeks. Roy, we'll start with you. Your first Giro, now done in the books. Was it what you expected? Um, yeah, yes and no. Uh, I expected to be a little bit chaotic, uh, like Italians always are. But um, yeah, actually, I was surprised by the the landscapes, uh, the beautiful country of Italy. So that was uh, what I didn't expect. And of course, um, yeah, to do such a good GC again after uh, last year's win and with all the, the pressure, all the things added uh, to prove uh, for the second year in a row that you can compete with, uh, with the world best, that, um, that it, we would achieve it. Uh, yeah, it's really a, a nice feeling that, uh, that that's uh, in the books now. And it looks like you guys all had some fun as well. How important is that to actually create a good atmosphere, a good dynamic within the team? I think that's a key to success because, um, like the the races, they are so uh, so hard, and yeah, every day you have to be fully concentrated in the race to to do all the things right. Um, yeah, that next to that uh, you need some fun and you need some uh, some moments of uh, deep pressuring, and uh, that keeps the, the three weeks uh, running. No roll. <laughs> and the moment, the the moment that stands out for you two is one of the best, the funniest, a high point. Uh, we had it just now, I think, after the finish. <laughs> we were laying in the grass, you know, somewhere in next to the Colosseum, drinking beers, and uh, DJ Lenny had his uh, music out, and uh, we had some chips. Unfortunately, no pizza yet, but uh, beer and chips would do the job, and uh, it was a really nice after party for me. It was the best moment. I'm glad you've brought up food because forget bike racing, forget the Giro d'Italia. I've been desperate to know since watching your vlog if you ever found, now forgive my pronunciation, did Gem you find a creme knudel? We're on search for creme knudel. So if somebody knows in the restaurant that has it, send a message. Did you find Something one? Like, no, 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 no. I uh, some Omen showed me on on uh, on uh, on Google how it looks like. So, you were uh, pretty intent on, on finding yeah, it. Yeah, I was I was desperate to find it, but I climbed 500 uh, meters that day on the 500, a 1,000 altitude yeah, meters. Yeah, the right? boys they were the boys they were getting a little bit grumpy. I wanted to climb more to find the game knudel, <laughs> but uh, we decided to turn around and go back to the hotel, you know, which was uh, down by the river. Okay, so forget Austria. Yeah. Uh, what sticks out in both of your minds from the start in Israel? It was hot. It was, uh, Jerusalem was nice. Actually, training I didn't like too much there. The days before, we have to train still a little bit of hours, but we, we were in the car one hour and then we rode two or three hours in the desert and it was not too much fun. So actually, I was happy to be in Italy, but uh, Jerusalem was nice to see. Okay, Roy, you're the you're the boss on the road, and Lawrence, you may have a you may have something to say about this. But do you have the final word after after the meetings in the mornings? Do you say right, this is how it's going down today, or do you get back chat from him? 
yeah, of course I get back chat <laughs> from him, but uh, it's not only me. I think we we decide uh, with all the guys together what uh, what our plan will be, and um, in the end uh, that's something we all agree on. And uh, in the race sometimes it doesn't go like you planned in the morning, and then I am the guy to organize if you have to change the plan, but. Um, Normally, uh, it's not only me giving the giving the call. It's uh, it's in every it comes out of everybody's minds, and uh, that's what uh, what makes a plan a good plan, I think. And there's so much that goes on on that bus that, of course, nobody sees. You took us on a tour of the bus in one of your vlogs, and you called yourself the bad boy at the back. Is that true? Are you the bad boy at the back of the bus? No, I like when I was young, I always wanted to be, but I was always in the front. So uh, I decided when I'm older, then I can decide myself where I sit, and now I sit in the back. Actually, I moved to the front, right? You remember my first year in the team? Yeah, you were in the back. <laughs> but was he was next success. to me, and he spoiled coffee over me and uh, pasta. Every day, I every banished day. him to the front. So I <laughs> go to the front. Don't make a mistake. <laughs> I removed him to the front. Yeah, that's true. Okay, talk to me about the funny moments that happen that nobody sees on that bus. Keep them clean. I think one you saw in the vlog uh, when we were all dancing just before uh, uh, stage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there were some serious moves going on there. <laughs> <laughs> we have a Polish uh, dancing bear uh, who did uh, yeah, some incredible. Dance, uh, dance. I'm not good at dancing. No. And Lawrence, for you, what's been the main difference between 2017, last year, and this year? Now, last year we were here with the pink jersey, right? So I mean, that's, that, yeah, that's the obvious one. The main difference, but uh, uh, I think we can be really proud, and especially Tom. You know, after uh, after last year, to confirm is always more difficult than to get to the top, and then to come here after a few period of training and to confirm. Like for me, he's, he's the guy who's been three weeks on uh, on the same level. Like you saw, uh, Yates was fading, Froome was coming, but he was there for three weeks, always on the, the appointment at the right time, you know? Like, so he was there when he needed to be. So that's, I think he can be re really proud of it. And then we have our young gun, gun Sam Elman, got ninth, 22 years old, actually supporting his leader without any pressure, but still got there. And uh, I think uh, that's also a remarkable result. So I think we can be really proud of, uh, of this Giro and I will, uh, I will have good memories of this too, you know, I won my first two years, the third I got second, you know, with the team, so uh, it's, not a bad, uh, it's not a bad effort, you know, and uh, I'm really proud of the team and all the boys, how they worked, and even also Louis Favaca, for example, unfortunately had to pull out two days before the finish, he was also uh, there for three weeks and giving us all he could, and uh, I think we had a nice group together. So uh, we can be proud, yeah. And then if there's one better, that's that's sports, you know. Like also Froome worked his ass off. Also Yates worked his ass off. And it's, that doesn't mean that if Tom is three weeks on a mountain, he deserves to win, you know. It's still a race to be racing. And uh, we raced it with uh, everything we had. And uh, at the end, this was the result. We fought till Rome. And uh, if, if second is the result, we have to be satisfied with that. And what will you miss from the Giro, do you think? The coffee in the morning. <laughs> yeah. And what have you missed from home? The coffee in the my, morning. Yeah, the coffee. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my, like my, coffee kids, my kids, my wife, yeah. uh, deciding what to eat myself, stuff like that, drink a beer. And for both of you, what's the first thing you're going to do when you get home? Yeah, have fun with the kids. Yeah. It's, uh, Same, we're, we're both the, the, the two only dads, I think, at the, in this team, mm -hmm. right otherwise. And uh, I'm also looking forward to be just in time home to get my oldest from uh, from school because uh, school's finished. And if I make it just in time, I can go with my bike to uh, to, pick to school up. to pick him up. And that's what I look forward to the most. Yeah. And we have some questions for you both from fans now as well. Roy, first up, from someone who's really excited that you finished your first Giro. Um, how do you feel? And what did you think before, during, and now after your Giro d'Italia? Before I thought it was going to be tough, uh, during I thought it is tough, and afterwards I think it was tough. <laughs> and how do you feel now? Tired. <laughs> that sums it up. And Lawrence, for you, um, from Martin Bosma, and I really hope I pronounced that properly, um, what do you really, there's a food theme with oh, you nice. going on, what oh. do you really want to eat now the Giro is over? Oh man, no, no, no. no. <laughs> 
a T-bone, T-bone steak. Okay. Yeah. Tomorrow night, I go to the best restaurant in Alkmaar. I bring my kids, my family, and my uh, aangenomen zoon. So my uh, adopted, <laughs> uh, adopted son. son. And we go for a big dinner. Yeah. Sounds like you're going to have a good rest period after yeah, the Giro d'Italia. Yeah. Roy, Lawrence, thank you very much for joining me up here. So we've talked about vlogging and we've seen how much fun these guys have had. Let's take a look now at how the rest of the team saw their Giro d'Italia. I don't know why. <laughs> Just want to show you my little cockpit today. Here, all the delicious bombers, power boosters, gels for the riders who pass by. Nice bike pod, totally flat. Of course, there is always the team behind the team racing on the road, and I'm very happy now to be joined by the two coaches of Team Summer, Mark Reef and Hendrik Werner. Before we chat to the guys, though, let's take a look at some of the best bits of their Giro. Guys, it certainly looks like you had some fun and there were some highs and, and lows over the last three weeks as well. Um, we saw some nice dancing skills from Arthur in there. Not much from you two though. Would you show us some now? <laughs> I think Yahoo is better to, uh, to show us some moves. Will we be doing any tonight? Bringing them out? Maybe, maybe. We just have to see. We first have a uh, nice dinner over here and then uh, perhaps we, uh, we join the, the good stuff in, uh, in uh, Rome. Now, seriously, Mark, obviously being the coach, you will feel those highs and lows um, as acutely as the riders. What was the most difficult moment or the most difficult moments for you over the last three weeks? Well, I think that uh, the most difficult is to be every day again sharp, to be every day. You need to be focused, you need to be, uh, you need to be there. And I think that is uh, for sure something what is, uh, yeah, what is really difficult. Uh, but on the other hand, it's, uh, I also spoke to Roy Curvis, who was just uh, just with you and he also said it was one of the fastest uh, uh, Grand Tours that he did and it is also because every day you need to have that focus again you need to be sharp and um, like a few years ago it was with when you were a sprinter team you had some days that you need to have the focus and also other days that you uh, yeah, that you can more relax and uh, and just make the time cut actually and uh, yeah this year it's every day you need to be there and that's uh, that's on one hand difficult but also um, yeah, makes it that it goes quick. Of course, you're racing for the GC, so you've got to be bang on it. And the last three days have been absolutely epic, just extraordinary bike racing. Um, what's the atmosphere like when you're actually in the team car and following the racing as well from the team bus or wherever you're out there on the course? Do you guys get nervous too? Uh, in some moments, um, yes, uh, especially in the situation uh, if, um, um, if Tom would make time up to, uh, to Froome uh, on stage uh, 19 on the last climb. Up front we knew that, um, yeah, that something like that uh, could happen. Uh, we also knew that uh, Tom was strong. Uh, we took some decisions there uh, in the race uh, where we are still uh, behind. And um, yeah, when he got close to the climb, uh, of course pink was, uh, was still possible. Eh? So at that moment uh, you start to get a little bit nervous. But uh, for the rest, yeah, you, you also try to stay as calm as possible, also not to bring that nervosity uh, too much to the riders. Um, but that was, uh, that was a very, uh, yeah, that was a nice moment, but also a moment that, you, uh, that we, we started to get nervous. Yeah. And Hendrik, for you, nerves, pressure, have you felt yeah. it all? Yeah, for me, for me definitely, uh, yeah, I was also nervous there. I mean, you have, to, you have to imagine, you're not just sitting there and driving the car or something. There's all kind of information coming and once a rider asking you something, your subconscious will tell you, okay, you have to respond. Huh? It's not about like, oh, yeah, I don't hear it and everything is fine. So uh, for me, I feel, I feel definitely part of it and I think I would, uh, yeah, I'm the same nervous in the rider as well. 
And you've been very much part of this year as well. Um, your first ever vlog. How was it? Is this uh, the start of a new career? Will you become a YouTube sensation? Yeah, don't think so and uh, not hoping. Uh, no, it was actually, um, well, I was hesitating and asking not to do it and uh, put quite some resistance. Uh, but actually it was also interesting to, to get all the information. I like one quote pretty much, I'm always sharing it, but uh, today I'm not think what I am. Today I'm not thinking what, uh, what you think I am. Today I'm thinking what I think, what you think, what I am. And so what I'm meaning is I'm living in a perception of a perception and getting this live feedback of this, yeah, getting this live feedback of this perception and fuck off, that's me. And uh, that was actually really hard. Yeah. Wow, yeah. it's quite meta of you. Yeah. I feel like you're in the matrix almost. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that was uh, the hard part. Yeah. <laughs> the hardest part of to your not just was function or something. Yeah. <laughs> and we talked about the hard, the, the hardest parts, and, and the lows, and the moments of tension. But what about the moments of joy? The moments where you felt so high, and it felt like everything was going some web's way. Yeah. I hope that they will come. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean. Uh, I think one of my biggest needs and things, something I'm really aiming for is uncertainty. So it means something comes unexpected and you have to, to, to adapt and you get loads of this here. And I mean, this feels like the spice in my life and I'm pretty sure that here was quite some action, quite some things to do. So, um, of course, the team also lost Louis Vervaca as well on stage 19. How mm. difficult is it, firstly, for that rider to have to step away so close to Rome, but also for the team as a whole to have to reshape around losing someone? Mm. I mean, it was pretty hard for everyone. Um, for me, it was the first time to be that close. You just see it in television, but I can definitely say that it was a super, super tough situation. He knew from already for quite some care that this will be a hard one, but still the moment everything was over, that's emotional for, yeah, for him, for me, for, for everybody. And uh, yeah, that was a hard situation. Any regrets, guys? Any, any mistakes? Any moment where you thought we've left that on the road today and we could have done better? I would, I would to my mind, I think we can really say there are not a lot of regrets. Anyway. No amount of regret will change the past, but uh, I, I think, I that, think we can be, uh, that we can be proud on uh, what we achieved. Uh, we came here with a goal to, uh, to fight for the GC, to try uh, to fight again for, for the victory. And I think that um, yeah, we succeeded, I think, until the end. We were all the time there. We were really, uh, Tom was really stable. The team was, uh, was really stable. And um, yeah, what I said, we did everything what we were able to to make it happen and on the end uh, yeah, that's also a top spot you have to be yeah, you need to accept what you achieved and I think that uh, yeah, what I said we are really proud on uh, on the achievement here. Mark Hendrick thank you so much often the work of the team behind the scenes goes unnoticed so great to chat to both of you well the Giro was very much turned on its head in the most astonishing fashion in the last few days of this year's Giro d'Italia here's how it played out through the eyes of the team. Jeetjes is gelost, hè? Jeetjes is gelost. Klasse, Tom, kom op. Knokken, hè? Jeetjes is gelost. Heel goed Tom, heel goed, prima. Tot op de lijn, iedere seconde telt. Jeets in de problemen. Grote klasse. Prima. Ja, 
Oh, she wrote three. She wrote three? Yeah, she turned to go. 28 seconds. Oh, of course, it's a good uh, day, but uh, I know uh, the coming two days are going to be different and even much harder than today. But we just have to see. But I go. Uh, You're encouraged. Go You're encouraged. All right. Zo, so. dit is wel een uh, boost aan zelfvertrouwen, denk ik, mm. die getankt ja, is vandaag. Ik, ik, ik weet heel goed wat er nog komen kan. Nee, dat, dat weet ja. ik ook, maar ik vond uh, voor de koers had ik misschien een beetje de indruk van uh, dat je denkt van nou, hè, die mannen gaan het mij moeilijk maken. Ja? Ja, maar dat, die en dat is en dat blijft, steeds, dat is en blijft nog steeds voor de komende dagen, dat mag, ja. maar ik denk wel dat je hier wel vertrouwen uit mag denken. Mm. Morgen. Ja. We moeten zoveel mogelijk manoeuvreren. Ja. Op finesse gaat het gewoon op profval. Sky gaat daar uh, alles uit elkaar trekken. Ja. Verwacht ik. En dan, mm -hmm. Als je niet sterk genoeg bent, dan moet je slimmer zijn dan de rest. Ja, gedeeltelijk ben ik daar met jou eens. Maar het andere deel is ja. natuurlijk ook dat Mitchelton en Sky ons tot nog toe niet hebben laten ja. rijden. En zich uh, daarop hebben liggen. Slim. Slimme manier. Mitchelton en Sky, wat die aan het doen zijn. Ja. Die moeten elkaar kapot rijden, heb ik ja. En daar moeten wij van kunnen profiteren. Klopt. Ja, dat wordt uh, wel wat pompen verzuiken. Ja. Denk ik wel. Ja. En uh, als je daar met een halve minuut of een minuut... Nou, een halve minuut kan ik nog dicht in afdaling, maar een minuut... Bovenop met een minuut op acht, achterstand op Froome of zo bij, mm -hmm. overkomen, dan wordt het toch moeilijk. Ja. En uh, vertrouwen en uh, met een boost naar uh, de komende dagen. Hè? Driving up north on the trans Canada Highway. The night is sweet, thousand stars. Now in uh, Finale Areale, the start of uh, stage 19 of, uh, of this year's uh, Giro d'Italia. Uh, today's stage is a really important one. It's, uh, the, uh, it's the Queen stage. We have uh, like four really difficult uh, climbs. Uh, looking to uh, today's stage, guys. Uh, Queen stage 185k first the parcours. Uh, it's excited, but we are also nervous uh, on uh, on what's happening uh, and what is going to happen. What we have in control, we have to do good. Uh, we have to uh, have control in the in the start of the climb, and we have to support Tom as long as possible. Uh, and then we uh, we see in the end uh, who's having the legs uh, or not. Froom went already on Finestre. Uh, yeah. Not maybe. Yeah. Uh, the, the, what, will, what will happen is that Sky sends riders in the break. Pools is going to make a uh, super hard tempo on Finesse uh, yes. and uh, Froome attacks a few K before the top and he will try to bridge yeah. out to the guys in front. That is what 100% is going to happen. Yeah. 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 Abandon and it was really hard because I was looking forward to the adventure and to finish it till, uh, till World. Yeah. I was really, uh, really one of the hardest moments of my career, maybe also. I was uh, feeling like I was abandoning the team. I was really looking forward to how this team this year to win the, 
the with the pink jersey and uh, yeah, now I'm still really, really disappointed, but I'm, uh, I'm already looking forward to make some new goals and to see what uh, the rest of the season will bring. I'm uh, really, <laughs> really, really tired. <laughs> yeah, the last uh, three weeks have been very hard, and uh, especially today was a crazy stage. So, <laughs> really tired. <laughs> yeah, right now I feel absolutely fucked. Yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <coughs> Uh, I'm, I'm scared for today, that I can tell you. Yeah. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, if I uh, magically have the legs to do more than following, then, uh, then I will go all out uh, at uh, like 10 k to go. And then just before it would be good to if some. Uh, just sets a really, really strong pace, like 450, 500 watts, and then, uh, <laughs> 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 no problem. I meant it. just for a short period. <laughs> 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 Okay guys, three amazing weeks, really good job until now, keep up it for the last uh, stage and then uh, chapeau, good luck.
Delighted now to be joined by Tom Dumoulin, winner of the 2017 Giro d'Italia and second overall this year, plus teammate Chad Hager. Now, before we talk to the guys, let's take a look at their best bits of this year's Giro. Well, guys, it looks like you've had quite the three weeks. Tom, we'll start with you. We're, we're here in Rome, you're second on GC. Can you try to sum up your emotions, try to put into words the kind of feeling you have right now? Um, happy and proud <laughs> uh, that we made it <laughs> until Rome. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, uh, yeah, the second place is just really nice and uh, a bit of a confirmation uh, from for what happened uh, last year with the win um, and uh, yeah I'm just really proud of of the team of, of myself of everyone yeah is it bittersweet at all or, or are you completely comfortable with the fact that you left everything out there yeah, yeah I'm completely comfortable with it I have no regrets I tried everything and uh, I raised my heart out for three weeks and uh, yeah, if then somebody is stronger than that's it and you were by far the most consistent rider, I think, by, by all accounts, not just mm. here within the team, but sort of journalists, pundits alike, named you as the most consistent. Is that for you confirmation and, co and consolidation as well, that last year's win wasn't a one-off? You are mm -hmm. a Grand Tour contender, you know, year in, year out. I guess so, at least the yeah. uh, last few years. <laughs> and Chad, for you as well, what's this Giro been like? I, it's, it's been amazing. Uh, last year was incredible to, to support Tom and have him win and then to come here with, with more focus on the team because he was a, a favorite from the start this time and, and to really have the goal like okay we're, we're coming here with the goal to win again. Is, uh, it forced us to really focus the whole time and, and we did everything we could in the best way possible. And Tom for you as well, I know Chad and your team have worked tirelessly can you live with the fact that you came second to Chris Froome? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like I said, uh, I'm, I'm just happy and proud with what we did the, the last three weeks. And uh, uh, we did everything right. We made no mistakes and we, we, we fought until the end. And uh, yeah, like I said, if, if then it turns out a bit, there's one rider better, then so be it. Yeah, and then that's it. <laughs> you can't win them all. And, and Chad, for you, I know for a fact you like coffee. Yeah. I say like, I think <laughs> love, pretty passionate yeah, I, about. I, talk I, to me about this obsession, because it's a, I, it's a bike rider thing, but you seem into it. I don't know that it's an obsession, but it's <laughs> it's definitely an outlet, something to enjoy aside from racing. And we, we travel so much, and sometimes the, the hotel coffee is terrible, and so I found that you, know, you can make life that little bit better, and, and you know we have a, a fair bit of free time off the bike, and... And being an early riser that it, with you know late starts here at the Giro, then I, I have a fair bit of time. So I like to to have a, a nice cup of coffee here in the mornings. And then uh, yeah, at home, Tom gave us a, a fantastic gift from last year's Giro, and so now I, uh, the coffee at home is even better. And you said you're an early riser. Who who do you normally room with, and do you irritate them by waking up so early? <laughs> <laughs> well, generally I'm pretty quiet, regardless of who I, I am with. So when I when I get up, I kind of shuffle out quietly. But uh, uh, I'm often with Lawrence, and he's also up early. And uh, but this year we've shuffled around a bit, and uh, we made it work with, uh, wherever and with whomever. And you've been playing the piano during the Giro as well. Uh, I've just, heard the cheeky hotel reception yeah, rumors. Only once. Mm. Uh, Did you hear it, Tom? What did you think? No, I, I didn't. <laughs> I heard it before no, already. I, uh, I, I don't remember which hotel it was, or which <laughs> stage, but... Uh, yeah. And were you able to do, do you feel, everything you could on the road to help Tom to where he is today? Yeah, I can tell you, as slow and horrible as I felt today, that I, <laughs> I gave everything I could for Tom. And Tom, the love from the Italian fans has just been incredible. How many selfies do you reckon you <laughs> yeah. have taken or been in this oh, Giro? I counted them, and it's like 
2000, uh, <laughs> uh, a, lot. a lot, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I, I love the Italian fans, they're really uh, respectful um, to anyone, so whether you're Dutch, British, uh, Italian, or they all cheer for you, and uh, uh, that's something I have seen differently in other races, so uh, it's, it's really nice to be in Italy and uh, to be cheered on, uh, whoever you are. And the love as well from the Italian fans, did that give you extra motivation and added energy each day? Uh, I guess so. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm mostly racing for, for the team and for myself, but uh, it's very nice to see when uh, people love what you do. And uh, I love what I do, but it's also very, very helpful and, and, and cool to see that, that others uh, love that as well. And, uh, um, respect that and uh, yeah, that, that definitely gives some motivation. And can you sum up and put into words, both of you, what it's like to actually work towards an overall win in a Grand Tour as a team, what it takes from each individual? <laughs> uh, I, I could say for me it's been a season-long build and, and focus with every race I did and every, every training session I did was to be at my best here at the Giro and, and that's for every rider here and uh, I think we all managed that well and, and resulted in, uh, in a great performance from Tom. And Tom, for you as well? Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it's, it's been, uh, it's, it's hard work to be at your best at the Giro, or to try to be at your best, of course. Um, and then here I'm, I'm trying to enjoy it as much as possible when I'm here, um, because this relaxed feeling gives me also the most uh, uh, yeah, it, it, it works the best for me, but it's it's sometimes also very stressful. So um, th that is also what I. It's it's super stressful three weeks for me, but uh, I'm I'm always happy when it's over. But it, I I love doing it. Yeah. And we saw Chad's passion for making coffee as well, mm. and knowing that he gets up every morning and really takes time over it. How much caffeine have you <laughs> taken mm. in to get you through the last three weeks? Not a lot. Yeah, actually, <laughs> I have to say. It's, it's really, really impressive how little uh, he's had. Uh, uh, not a coffee my, man. Uh, uh, I'm normally a coffee man, but uh, yep. I try to refrain myself from it. You can, uh, you can during really fry yourself too. if you over uh. overindulge in the coffee. Uh. It, over three weeks, the body just gets so tapped out <coughs> with the adrenals, and he's managed it really uh. impressively. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I usually, yeah, in a grand tour, I usually don't drink coffee. Oh gosh, <laughs> I'm shocked. Okay, Chad, um, fans from home, obviously, time difference, time zones, everything, mm -hmm. it must be quite difficult. Have a lot of your friends, family, and also generally American bike fans been following the Giro? Uh, yeah, there's actually uh, a new cycling publication, uh, Flow Sports, that's uh, been broadcasting live and with the replays, so it's... It's made the Giro uh, much more accessible for fans at home, and they've really taken to it. And so I think the, the viewership in the U.S. has gone up uh, for the Giro this year. And for both of you, um, what's next? What are you going to do? First thing you're going to do at home, and then also further afield, what's next on the horizon? Uh, for me, uh, tomorrow night is, is burgers and uh, just <laughs> re relaxing uh, for a while to fully recover from this. And then uh, Nationals is my next race. Tom, for you? Uh, also, just some relaxing days at home with good food and uh, playing with my dog. And <laughs> what <laughs> just, dog do you uh, have? A white Shepherd, oh, a lovely. big one. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that sort of stuff. Yeah. And then beyond that, racing for you? Uh, probably the Tour, but uh, Tour de France, but we're not sure yet. Uh, we decide in the coming two weeks somewhere. And um, Otherwise, just nationals. And I know it's and been Hammer Series. A Hammer actually, Series coming Friday. Already. That'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's really soon for <laughs> you. Yeah. For you. Um, yeah. Now I know it's been an incredibly tough three weeks. It's been pretty brutal by all accounts. This this Giro. Is there something you'll miss though from the Giro? I'm sure there's relief. It's over, but it's been a very close knit three weeks within the team as well. I, I'm going to miss a lot of things. It's uh, it's it's something really special what we're doing here or what we did here. Uh, not only result-wise, but I mean, this sort of a weird lifestyle that only a few of us get to experience. Um, and uh, yeah, that's something I'm going to miss. Yeah. Chad, for you? 
Oh, we, we really, I mean, we're great friends uh, within the team already, but uh, spending better part of a month together really builds camaraderie and you, you build a bond with the staff and the riders here and so it'll uh, be sad and kind of awkward and weird to leave them uh, for a while and not see them anymore for until uh, whatever race down the road. And we've got a couple of questions from the fans as well. Um, Tom, starting with you, what is your best memory of the Giro? Uh, I would say my best memory is the the TT win on the first day, uh, winning in the World Championships jersey, taking the, the pink jersey. That was quite a special day. And Chad, for you, from Nienka, I really hope I've said that right as well, um, what's your oversimplified report of the entire Giro? Oh, I gave that already on Twitter. <laughs> okay, you have to it give was, it again. The uh, uh, best I can remember was uh, remarkable, no, yeah, remarkable guy does lap of Israel and Italy and only manages to beat uh, last year's top guy by not even a minute, uh, something along those lines. <laughs> Pretty much sums it up. Chad, Tom, thank you so much for joining us and for entertaining us over the last three weeks. Now the Giro is over, these guys need a break. I think we all do. Maybe this will whet your appetite. Sunweb, unique holidays at an unbeatable value for money. Sunweb, creating memories in the race and on holiday. So, second in the general classification and a stage win for Tom Dumoulin. Ninth overall for Sam Oman. One day in the Maglia Rosa, but 21 days with the coveted number one on Team Sunweb's back. It's certainly been a fantastic Giro d'Italia. From us here in Rome to you guys watching at home, cheers and see you next time.